In light of the Pope recently banning Freemasons from being Catholics and allowed communion, which is a big deal, we decided it'd be appropriate to look at America's sus history with the secret society of Freemasonry. Let's jump into this video. This is from History Channel. The History Channel. Oh, yes, a great source. Not really. Freemasons account for two of the five committee members who drafted the Declaration of Independence. 40% of the generals during the Revolutionary War had 30% of those who signed their names on the U.S. Constitution. That's high. It's a lot of, it's a lot of something. That's a lot. That's a lot. I've also heard that a lot of these guys had theology degrees, and and some of them were deists, like Thomas Jefferson was actually a de obviously a deist, but then there was other people that are not deists. They were theists. They were some of them were Christians. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how how what this means. Like uh, ugh, that's a lot. That's a little spooky. Makes sense for the uh, the the eye on the dollar. Yeah, yeah Freemasonry and the ideals that went into the American Constitution and the Declaration of Independence have an awful lot of overlap. They had values of religious tolerance and cosmopolitanism and rights and formal equality between all citizens. One of the Masons at the time was Montesquieu, a famous French political philosopher who had this radical idea of a separation of powers, that you should have three branches of government. I mean, that's a great idea. Balance of power. They were probably still dealing with some PTSD from being in Great Britain, right? That wasn't that long ago or has, or having to interact with them. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty... Uh, Great idea. So I'm curious if it was the overflow of their Freemasonry mm -hmm. and the occult of Freemasonry, or if it was just, hey man, God used these guys. They had great minds, great thinkers, and they happened to dabble in some sus stuff. <laughs> yeah. DC, 1791. George Washington, now the first president of the United States of America, appoints French architect Pierre Charles L'Enfant to design the nation's capital. While Washington was a master mason, L'Enfant apparently never passed the level of entered apprentice. However, some believe that symbols associated with Freemasonry were embedded into the city's design as an acknowledgement of the ties between the secret society and the founding of the country. The okay, 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 okay. So this is where I go. Were they really just like leaving little Clean. Easter eggs? Yeah. Leaving little breadcrumbs like this? Were they really on this? Or, or is it possible that the architecture and the design was just coincidence. A lot of Freemasonry business. The layout of the city originally had these kind of odd diagonal streets. So they had to have some reason to lay them out that way because the normal way we lay out a city is by a grid pattern. And DC did not follow a traditional grid pattern. It's a very cleverly worked grid shape. So when seen from above, you have a five-sided star. Yikes. Yikes. You have a cascading star, which is all part of the Masonic thought. There's no doubt that Washington DC was laid out according to Masonic ideals and symbolism. So when we talk about, does a city have a spirit over it? And that's where our leaders lead the country from. And we wonder why there's so many bad ideas. Darkness, debauchery, Bohemian Darkness. Grove type behavior. Mm. I don't know, man. They got pentagrams you, that connect the whole city. driving in pentagrams. Yeah. Is that me and Zach talk? <laughs> we joke. This is no disrespect to anybody at Vegas. I actually like going to Vegas. And New York. In New York, but we 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 talk a lot about how like Vegas has like a like a spirit over it. Like when you touch down, it's this like uh, how would you describe it? It's this very like it's just this yucky, disgusting. Gosh, this is too harsh. Uh, <laughs> it's just this yucky, disgusting, rotting in the middle of the desert feeling that the locals have, and then the Christians are just like. Just cl just climbing out of it. Just <laughs> just trying their best to keep their sanctuaries not smelling like cigarettes. Just like just struggling. And yeah. just like I mean, Dustin Tavella. Mm -hmm. He did he did ministry yep, yep. through uh his show yep. in Vegas and was like, Man, it was just hard. Yeah. It was yeah. just hard to do ministry in a city yeah. that's that hates what you stand for. Yeah. Yeah. The Sin City. And yep. so, and so it's just hard. It's just not a city that glorifies the things that Christians stand for much less conservative or even just like it lacks peace. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling of the the. the city I mean, you lacks, land and you see people gambling and, and well, as you're getting off your plane. Yes, it, it lacks contentment. Yeah. It lacks peace. Yeah. It has that feeling that mm -hmm. just zaps joy out of you. Yeah. And New York is uh, New York is like a spiritually gaslighting city. Yeah, like they'll have you thinking you're really a bigot in the scum of the earth for being Christian. Yeah, because everybody is like far gone. Like like most people, there it's just brain rot. Like you so, let, New York's different. Yeah, you you get there and you don't feel like it lacks peace or or the. It's just 
you actually feel like it's electric. It's mm -hmm. got all this stuff going. Mm -hmm. And then you start to think like, oh, maybe they, they got it all figured out. That's mm -hmm. what they try to do. They mm -hmm. try to make them feel like we got it all figured out. Yeah. Now, now you just, just believe what we believe. Maybe, maybe, maybe boys can be girls. Yeah. What's so bad? What's so bad about that? Yeah. Right. Welcome to the 57th floor. <laughs> Go ahead. In 1793, President George Washington presided over the laying of the cornerstone for the U.S. Capitol building, a ceremony that not only initiated construction, but was also highlighted by elaborate Masonic rituals. There appears George Washington and his Masonic regalia to hmm. perform a Masonic ceremony with grain what? and oil and Masonic measuring instruments and so on. Oh no! Yeah, the leader of the Republic, many of its key Where officers. Where is the in Bible? I've heard, I've heard, I've had Christians build their home and then, like, on a cornerstone of their home, they'll put a Bible underneath. Oh, they'll anoint it with oil. This dude was doing Messianic rituals. He's putting like cloves of garlic on a piece of. What leather. are we doing? Oh, man. A public Masonic ceremony. And yet they're doing this as a ceremony based around their secret society. Some suggest that the Freemasons who were involved actually had a hidden agenda. People became suspicious of the fraternity. It kind of supported, I believe, the fears that Freemasonry exerted some kind of power over the government or amongst society. Freemasonry was enormously successful in the early American Republic. But in 1826, a kind of disaster befell Freemasonry by the name of the Morgan Affair. In uh -oh. 1826, William Morgan, a prominent hold Freemason. On, hold, on, hold, on, hold 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 on, Balenciaga. Is that his hairline, or did they decide to paint a picture of him with his glasses over his forehead? I think, I think, I think, yeah, he was probably putting them on his. What? Head. That yeah, made that's... no sense. Oh, no, 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 while someone sits there and meticulously paints you. Yeah. Maybe it was a, mis uh, a Freemason symbol, symbolism. The all-seeing mm -hmm. eyes. No, that's just, <laughs> that's just bad taste. Upstate New York signed a publishing contract promising to reveal secrets of Masonic initiations. Uh-oh. Traditionally, the Masonic oath has been quite blood-curdling. Uh, they were supposed to swear absolutely solemnly in front of all their brethren that they would never tell the secrets outside of the lodge on pain of some quite hideous punishments, such as having their tongue torn out and their throat cut. Some of the guys in town decide to take their Masonic obligation much more seriously than they really should have, and they essentially throw him in a carriage right off into the woods, and Morgan shouts out the window, murder, as they go off into the sunset, and he's never seen again. But wow. Was never this man was gone. And they keep drawing him with the, with the stupid... <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. I am very... This is a whole other... Drawing and he's still so got the frustrated. Daggone... He still got the stupid glasses over his eyes. What are we doing? They the unalived fun. him. That's pretty dark. Sheesh. They never found his body, he says. But an investigation was conducted, and members of the local lodge were put on trial for his death. There was a trial that was held of the Masons who had abducted him. The judge in the case was a Mason. The governor, he was a Mason. I believe the sheriff was a Mason. You had all these Masons involved with the prosecution of the crime. Lo and behold, Nobody is convicted for the murder of William Morgan. Yikes. That sets off this massive national wave of hysteria against the Masons. This resulted in an anti-Masonic excitement that lasted from 1826 to 1842. And for that period, it was very unpopular to be a Freemason. Good. Good. Okay. So here, here's, 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 here's my thoughts. I don't think nepotism or what, what, what would this be called? Cronian is like, like when you're putting your people on, when mm -hmm. you and your people got a pack. Like, I don't think that's unique to secret societies. I don't think that's unique to secret society. I think all of us want to put our own people on. Yeah. If if you're a good person, if you're winning, you want your people that came up with you to win. This is this is common. This is why business empires are passed down. This is why these sorts of things happen. The the layer of of this that's spooky is the occult like practice mm -hmm. that's involved where from my understanding the higher level Masons have to do things like denounce Christ. Yikes. Have to do pagan rituals that are probably opening them up to demonic realms. So it's not like, hey man, I'll give you an example. If you if we look around my friends from a couple years ago, mm -hmm. a lot of my friends are winning. Some of them have helped each other out. Mm-hmm. At the very least, on an informational level, others have uh, uh, done deals and open doors and, and, and walked people through buildings and connections. That's that's not bad. Like that's not good. Like this is what a brotherhood does. Yep. Right. And this is like call me crazy. I think this is what the church should be doing for each other. Oh, totally. Like if you're at a local church 
and someone is struggling, the local church should come around and help that person. If you're uh, uh, an employer at a local church and someone needs a job and they're capable to do the job, you should be able to employ that person. Mm-hmm. If, 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 if there's a death in a family, the local church should come around and a uh, 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 benevolence fund. These are good things. These are not bad things. Where they go bad is in whom to you pledge allegiance to and where are you al- aligning yourself, right? And so we had the passages that we that we looked at, right? The, the dangerous part about this is that in attempting to do quote unquote good things, you you forget that like, and if you're not right with God, the enemy here says, and 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 no wonder, this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So the the and someone that masquerades as an angel of life will take good things and they'll pervert them. Mm. They'll take gifts from God like community like looking out for each other, like having a brotherhood, like pulling each other up as people are winning, like taking care of the least. He'll take good things and he'll masquerade them and pervert them because he masquerades as an angel of light, right? So it's not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of light, uh, as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. That's the, that's the dangerous part. Now, again, when we look at Jesus— We see that with the work on the cross, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, excuse me, has taken away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, right? This is the same authorities, principalities, authorities that it talks about in Ephesians chapter 6. We not wrestle against flesh and blood. He made public spectacle of them, triumphing them over by the cross. So the biggest mistake that I think people make, two mistakes, one is people believe that neutrality exists, that you could be neutral. It's neither good or bad. It's just neutral. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You're either of the light or you're you're of the darkness. Neutral does not exist. It's one or the other, right? You could you could believe it exists, but that doesn't mean that it pragmatically and functionally exists. So that's a big mistake a lot of people make. It's like, well, what does it matter if what these people do? And 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 the more you find out, the more you go, whoa, there's the Epstein's and the Diddy's and all these crazy people that are doing things. And that's just the that's just the entertainment side. Could you imagine what's going on in some of the politics side of things? Dark. Right? So that's the big mistake. And the second mistake is what we see the Masons doing, but unfortunately what we see a lot of Christians doing, which is syncretism, where you're trying to combine opposing worldviews that are incompatible. You cannot combine Freemasonry with the gospel. If at a certain level in Freemasonry, you were told to to recant your faith in Jesus and only pledge your allegiance to the highest degree of the right, that's the part that's that's uh, that's scary, man. So anyway, uh, very interesting video, very Super. interesting conversation. I don't know what to make of it. I think that I I like to hope and believe that Jesus got us. I do believe that Jesus is on the throne right now, that he is king right now. And I do believe that what God has for certain Christians, no one can take away. Mm-hmm. Not the Illuminati, not the Freemasons. That doesn't mean that there won't be serious opposition for folks who are followers of Jesus that are attempting to gain ground in society, in culture, in politics, in the education system, so on and so forth. That is, There's going to be resistance, and it's not always physical. There could be somebody that has nothing to do with any Freemasons, any Illuminati, any cabal, and, and there's just a spiritual resistance that you run into, right? That is... Um, that's different. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.